Um, what uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about next, yeah, is this area between curves, how, how we find that. But <clears throat> I need to make one little uh, point about the U substitution um, that hasn't come up yet, <clears throat> but it might come up on one of these homework problems. So before I get going on the area between curves, let me <clears throat> do a side, side note here, if you will. If I'm going to integrate x cosine x squared minus x cubed, this integral here. Yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is going to be uh, a u substitution um, for part of it. The point I was going to make, though, is <clears throat> since there's two, basically two expressions here I've got subtracted that I'm integrating, I can integrate those separately. All right? So, in other words, <clears throat> I'm going to do an integral x cosine of x squared dx and then <clears throat> the integral of x cubed dx separately because in this case it does make it a little easier, easier on us uh, for various reasons. So the point is here, <clears throat> I only have to do the u substitution on this part of it. This, this is an easy antiderivative. You see what I'm saying? That's just power rule, okay? So I don't have to use the u substitution on it. All I have to do is the u substitution on this. I don't think we had one where we had it exactly like that, but <clears throat> it may come up in this homework uh, for this particular section here. So <clears throat> go ahead and finish it up. All right, so if I do the <clears throat> u substitution, I would have u is x squared. Then du is the derivative of that, which is 2x dx. <clears throat> so then divide, divide by 2x, and that's my... So d u over 2x is, uh, is my dx, so that'll give me x cosine, then the u substitution, u is x squared, dx is d u over 2x. Yeah, that's going to work nicely with the u substitution because then the x's cancel out there, and so really all I have here is <clears throat> one half cosine of u du, which is a nice, easy antiderivative now. Uh, sine <coughs> of u, one half sine of u, and then I just go ahead and put that back in, um, u is x squared. Okay, so I just use the u substitution on that, and then I can just bring this one down. That's just the antiderivative uh, power rule. I don't have to use that u substitution on that, that's what I was saying. If I if I try to use the U substitution with that, it, it complicates things way more than it should need it. Okay? And then don't forget plus C because it's all right. <clears throat> so I want to make that because that might uh, come up. All right. So this area between curves. Yeah, we've <laughs> found integrals, and that's the area between the curve and the x axis. Well, what if I want the area between two curves? What if I want, say, y equals f of x, and then y equals g of x, <clears throat> and I don't want the integral of either one of those two. I want the area what's that area between them? Well, of course, this is going to be related because we are talking about areas. This is going to be related to integrals. I mean, we need to think about the integrals here. <clears throat> How can we get that area uh, between the two? Well, if we think about the integrals here, <clears throat> if I did the integral, and this is A and B, sorry. <clears throat> So the area between the curves from A to B. So if I think about it, if I, if I do the integral of 
f from a to b. What does that give me? Well, that gives me the area from the curve down to the x-axis. But that's not what I want here. I only want the area from here to there. So how could I get that? Well, if you think about it, if I do the integral a to b of g of x, <clears throat> that would be from g of x down. So to get this area, wouldn't I just subtract? I just subtract it to. And so <clears throat> that's one way you can write it. They usually write it condensed there. Just go ahead and combine that. That's the same as the integral a to b of f of x minus g of x. Yeah. Okay, so that, <clears throat> that will give you the area between the curves, f and g, where f is the one that's greater. So it's, you just subtract the, the top one minus the bottom one, the upper one minus the lower one. <laughs> that's always going to give you this area between the curves. So it's, it's not that bad, you just have to subtract. All right, so let's look at a few here. <clears throat> and some other things that can happen. Okay, so let's find the area between. Y equals X squared plus two. Y equals x plus 1, x equals 0, and x equals 2. Find the area between all of those. <clears throat> so let's start by graphing here. Uh, y equals x squared plus 2, and that's going to be this. Y equals x plus 1, look like this. x squared plus 2 looks like this. It's Monday, so I want to stay for this Monday. All right. <clears throat> All right, so now this is what we've got. And so uh, x equals 0 is here, x equals 2. So I'd be talking about this area right in here. the area between the curves from x equals 0 to x equals 2. The x equals 0, x equals 2. That gives me my limits of integration, uh, basically. Um, <clears throat> one point before we get to the uh, actual calculation here. I think on these they'll ask you about that typical rectangle. So again, that would be... Um, that would be, if I was going to approximate this with the rectangles, what would the rectangles look like? And so in this case, <clears throat> the rectangles would look like they would be, uh, well, it'd be from, from this graph down to just this uh, curve here. I mean, that's something like that would be that typical rectangle. But um, <clears throat> that's just, again, establishing that that's a vertical rectangle up and down rectangle, and so that's integrating with respect to x. That's really what that uh, is all about. But if they ask you that typical rectangle, that's all they're wanting is something like that. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so back to the problem at hand. All right, so find the area between y equals x squared plus 2 and y. 
And so we just saw that if we're doing the area between curves, we do the upper one minus the lower one, that integral. So in this case, we do 0 to 2. And so the upper one would be x squared plus 2. And then minus the integral, the bottom would be uh, x plus 1. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, you're just going to subtract, subtract those two. And, of course, the uh, next point to be made is be careful with the signs here because, yeah, you're subtracting the second one here, the lower one. And so that's going to change that to be um, x squared plus 2 minus x minus 1, right? That's going to change both sides there. <clears throat> and so what we've got here, <clears throat> and it is good to combine like terms if you've got them, it would be what? x squared minus x, and then 2 minus 1 would be plus 1. And so that's the one. I mean, we don't have to combine terms, but it does cut down on a few things. But anyway, uh, yeah, so now... <clears throat> We've got our integral, which is a simple integral. It's just subtraction and addition, so I can just do the antiderivatives all separately. So I've got one-third x cubed minus one-half x squared plus just going to take one times x, and then we're going to evaluate that from zero to two. <clears throat> so plugging the two, you got eight, so it'll be eight-thirds. Uh, plugging the two, you get a four, so it'll be half of four plus 2, and then we like usually zeros because those give us zeros. Yeah, if x is 0, all those are 0. So it's just 8 thirds. It's 8 thirds, isn't it? <clears throat> because you got minus 2 and plus 2. 8 thirds. Good. Now, <clears throat> just just to think about it a little bit, what uh, so the, that kind of that example I started with had both uh, curves above the x-axis. What happens if we've got y equals f, f, f of x, and then <coughs> y equals g of x is down here? <coughs> And I want that area between those right there. <clears throat> well, let's think about it. So if I <clears throat> if I look at this, it looks like, yeah, the areas here are combined, aren't they? <clears throat> this area plus this area. Well, here's the thing. If I do the integral of g of x from a to b, what value does that give me? It would be a negative, wouldn't it? This would be a negative. The integral from a to b of g of x would be this area here, and it would be negative. Well, if I do this, <clears throat> what happens? This, this area is negative. So I'll have f of x minus a negative area. Won't that add the two areas together? Because that'll be uh, this area minus a minus, that'll be plus. So in essence, we'll be adding those areas. So yeah, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if your g of x is below the x-axis or above the x-axis. To get the area between those two curves, you're just going to do f of x minus g of x. So you don't really have to think about it. It's just upper minus lower. That's all you, all you have to remember. Okay? <clears throat> so the area between the two curves is still f of x minus g of x. It's always f of x minus g of x to find that area between. <clears throat> all right. Well, all right, so uh, y equals negative 1 half x squared minus 3 
y equals one third x plus two, x equals one, x equals five. So what's the area between all those? Well, it didn't hurt, I guess, to look at the graph here. <clears throat> Yeah, all right, so this is my uh, negative x squared, so it'll be the one that opens down. Uh, all right, so negative one half. Graph on your calculator, but I'm just going to gauge it in here. I believe that's something like that. Y equals one third x plus two. Would be something like this. x equals 1 to x equals 5. Yeah, so this is this is our example of um, I want to find that area right there. <clears throat> well, even though one's below the x-axis, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> that area between them is the integral a to b, which in this case would be 1 to 5, upper which would be the uh, <clears throat> one third x plus two would be the upper one here, minus the lower one, which would be the negative one half x squared minus three. <clears throat> okay, just the same thing, upper minus lower. <clears throat> so let's see, that would be one to five. So you have one third x plus two, and then that would be a plus one half x squared plus three. <clears throat> you gotta change the signs, the ones behind the minus in that case. And if it want to, probably would help put them in order, descending order. So I've got one half x squared plus one third x plus five. If I put them in order, you don't have to, but. Usually a good idea. With me there? Is it okay? All right. <clears throat> so now do our antiderivative. So we'd have one half the antiderivative of that would be one third x cubed plus one third the antiderivative of that would be one half x squared. The antiderivative of that's five x. So that oh, we got to do one to five here. All right. So plugging five, we got one six times. 5 cubed would be 125, and then it would be 1 6 times 5 squared, which is 25, and then we'd have 5 times 5, that's 25. And in this case, we've got the x is 1 is the lower limit, so what would that be? 1 6 plus 1 6 plus 5, if you plug in the 1 to all those, that's what we get. So all told there, what do we got? 125 over 6 plus 25 over 6 plus 25 minus 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 5. 44 and 2 thirds or Okay, all right. 